This chapter is about the turning effect of a force. Firstly, we have to understand the name called rigid body. Actually, with the rigid body is a body with a fixed shape and a fixed size. We call it a rigid body. For example, a rock, a stone, something that is hard, then usually it is a rigid body. And then the turning effect of a force, we know that the force can not just move a body, but it can also turn a body. So this time we'll focus on the turning effect. And the turning effect is related to the magnitude of the force and the perpendicular distance from the turning point. So for example, in the figure, you can see there is a door with a hinge and someone pushing it. So there is a force. And then there is a perpendicular distance. So when you push it, it will turn around the hinge. Now, this is the idea of the turning effect, which depends on the force and the perpendicular distance. So each time we have to think of a turning point. Now, it is not necessarily really for the object really turn, but we have to define this point in order to help us to solve the issue. Here is a other variable called the moment. We use this moment to describe the turning force. So the moment about a point is the turning effect of the force about the point. In another name of moment, we call it torch sometimes, but actually it's the same thing. The fixed point is the axis of rotation, sometimes we call it pivot or fulcrum. So actually it's just a name. You can regard it like the hinge of the door. Okay, so it is the axis of rotation. Usually we have to define it. Now for moments, there are two directions. One direction is clockwise. So you can see that in the figure, if we apply the force in that way, the turning moment will be in a clockwise direction. If we put the force in another way, so you can imagine it will turn it in an anti-clockwise direction. So there are just two directions of moment, is clockwise or anti-clockwise. Moment can be defined by the force time is perpendicular distance from a point. So make sure you're aware that it is a perpendicular distance. Okay, so that we can define it correctly. So torch is equal to FD. Once again, it is a perpendicular distance. And the unit is Nm. Newton time meter. Now let's consider this. Sometimes the force is not perpendicular to the rod. Okay, in that case, we have to define the distance in the with the perpendicular distance. So in this case, we have to extend the force backward and to find the perpendicular distance. So here. This is one case. And there is another case here. So you can see that once again, the force is not perpendicular with the length L. So we have to define it in another way. We may change it to the component so that it is perpendicular with the distance. Then we can use torch equal to FD. And the F now is F sine theta. And the D in this case is L. So it's a FL times sine theta. Now we can also consider the same case in an other way round. Suppose we don't want to change the force. We can redefine the perpendicular distance. Okay, so we will define the perpendicular distance of the force, which is D equals to L sine theta, which is similar to the previous figure. You will find that actually we will get the same result. So we can always think of the moment in both way. Another idea is the principle of moment. So what is principle of moment? It is defined in this way. For a body to be in equilibrium, then the resultant moment about any point is equal to zero. That means the net moment is equal to zero. What does it mean by net moment equal to zero? That means the total clockwise moment will be equal to the total anti-clockwise moment. Now the idea is like the force. 
Okay, if it is in equilibrium, then the total upward force equal to the total downward force. So let's consider this case. If we have three things hanging here, you can see the F1 will contribute to the anti clockwise moment, and the force 2 will contribute to the clockwise moment, and the force 3 will also contribute to another clockwise moment like this. So in this case, if it is in equilibrium or it is at rest, so that the clockwise moment F2D2 plus the F3 times D2 and D3 will be equal to the anti-clockwise moment. So we can use this idea to formulate our equation in different situations. You can see that in the examples.